Hello and welcome back to our study of Pnei Halacha, the teachings of Rabbi Yazim Alamed, Shlita. We continue along midweek and we continue to daven for our brave soldiers in the IDF, especially now with the latest incursion and operation taking place in the southern part of Gaza. We wish them well, Hatzlacha, strength and safety. Refor Shlema Lechalam Yisrael and a safe return of all of our hostages, especially amidst talks about a deal or no deal. We're not sure, but this is the life that we live now, which makes today's section even more appropriate. And we continue to learn Le'ilu Nishmas, Seren, Daniel, Shimon, Ben Arav, Duron, V'Sheli, Hashem, Yakum Damo, also fitting into this conversation because the, the next chapter two are about Pidyon Shavuyim, redeeming captives, something that's been on our mind for quite some time. Living captives, we hope, still some. Many we know are no longer living, but we need to retrieve their bodies for Kavur Yisrael. So here we go. Over the course of generations, particularly in the diaspora, many times Jews were taken captive or they were held prisoner but they were done so so that people could demand heavy ransoms. I guess now we're saying halavai, that should be the case, that there's a ransom. We would pay anything to get our hostages back. And this is not even in the exile. This is in Eretz Yisrael itself right now. Chachme Yisrael, nidrushu l'sugi zu ka'uva, v'kavu klole mekroniyim l'gabe etzim ma'amada shal mitzvah spedion shivuyim, l'gabe hamachir shemut l'shalem over pedionam. So Chazal have delved into this very painful topic, and they established certain guidelines about what one should do in a case of what we call pidyon shivui, which literally means redeeming captives, and how much one can spend or should spend in order to redeem captives. Amru chachamim shemitzvah gadol lifto shivuyim. Chazal tell us that it is a great mitzvah to redeem captives, uh, one need not look further than any of the demonstrations t- taking place in Tel Aviv right now, and secular Jews who are parading these signs around shows you the importance of it. It says, Pidyon Shavuya, Mitzvah Gedola Min HaTorah, are the signs that we read. We have to pay in order to redeem the captives. And this takes precedence over all other categories of tzedakah, of charity. Because someone who was in prison, someone who was held captive, they suffer terribly, hunger, thirst, lack of basic needs. And furthermore, of course, their lives are in danger. Therefore, we shouldn't hold back. We shouldn't be stingy. However, the rabbis establish a certain principle for us. We cannot spend an exorbitant amount of money to redeem captives. The mission of Gittin on Daf Mem says, The real use of the word Tikkun Ha'olam, if you want to get into that conversation, but the mission says, and there's a series of missions that deal with Tikkun Olam, that we don't redeem captives more than Demehem their value or their money. We'll see what that means. So the Gemara explains, what does this really mean? It's very simple, that if we would pay exorbitant amounts of money, this would only lead to more kidnappings and more people being taken because if the enemies realize what a high ransom they can get, then they won't hesitate to do it again so they could receive that ransom again knowing that we'll pay it. Amnam, but Talmud Nizkar Tam Nusuf Takana, but the Gemara answers a different reason or an additional reason. We don't want to overly burden the congregation or the community to give more money than they have. Ulam Dasrav Harishonim, however, according to most of the Rishonim, Halohim Harif, Harambam, Harashva, Hatur, to name them, Shatam Haikri Litakana Hudesh Lalo Dedes, Ashadim Litposi Hudim, Vichim Nisak Bishokhanarach. So those Rishonim, the Shokhanarach, the Paskan, like the first reason, and it's very logical that if we were to expend exorbitant amounts of money, it would only lead to more types of kidnapping, more Jews being taken and held for ransom. It would only inspire our enemies to do this more. 
So one could only imagine that Rav Malamed would go to the most famous case of ransom perhaps in Jewish history, and Rav Meir Merutenberg. Meir Merutenberg lived from 1215 to 1293. And he was taken and held captive. Kaiser Rudolf, as he was known, was taken and held captive what wanted to fill his coffers, which he was in dire need of funds. So he said, well, let me capture a very famous Jew, a big rabbi, the head of their community. And Maram Husham Bakela, and it's pronounced Anzisheim Shabalaz. I can't pronounce that well. But anyway, he was held prisoner. You can look up the story. It's a famous story. If you would, if you would Google Maharami Rutenberg, I guarantee you this is probably one of the first, if not the first thing that comes up. And of course, the students, they wanted to collect a tremendous amount of money so they could free their Rav. Because according to the halacha, for a leader of the community, for a Tamil Chacham, for a Torah scholar, for your teacher, you could give any amount of money. However, the Marami Rutenberg emphatically told his students, he told the community that they should not redeem him. He says, because he realized that if they would spend that much money to redeem him, it would only lead to more Jewish leaders being kidnapped because they would realize, hey, this is a wonderful way to fill our coffers, as mentioned. Maram B. Ruttenberg stayed in prison. He was held captive for seven years, ad leon petit rosso, until he died. Begdulas nafsho misi rosso harbe lamana klal, ged maram Ruttenberg es apirza, vehitzil es gadoli yisrael shabachar of mishevi. Because of this tremendous sacrifice on his part, his mesiris nefesh, and his tremendous character, he drew the line, and he saved countless number of other Torah scholars from being kidnapped, and he saved the treasuries of many Jewish communities from being emptied because these events didn't happen, because they realized, well, if the Jews aren't going to pay, then it's not worth it to kidnap them. When we talk about this, this is where we don't want to give a specific amount. This is where the community has to pay the value. But let's say a wealthy person was kidnapped. And he wants to give from his own funds. Well, a person, an individual, can do whatever he wants. Because if a rich person wants to redeem himself, this doesn't affect the community. But... He's endangering his own life because he realizes that if he's willing to pay an exorbitant sum of ransom, then they might just kidnap him again. But that's on him. That is his own calculation and has nothing to do with the community. But his family and his associates, they cannot give more than the prescribed amount when it comes to his wife. So then there are different opinions on this. But a very, very heavy topic, as we mentioned, and one that weighs heavily on our people right now as to what is the right price to pay to receive our loved ones back. And one certainly cannot fault anyone's position, particularly those who have loved ones that are still being held captive now for seven months. And we cannot fault them for saying, that we have to do whatever it takes, make a deal with the devil, whatever it might be. We are not in a position to criticize them, even if we have a different outlook, a different hashkafa. We shouldn't judge anyone. We don't judge anyone until we reach their place. But it's a very, very painful chapter for us right now, a very painful chapter to learn, but learn it we must. We'll see a little bit more as we go on because upcoming chapters Rav Malamed discusses danger and he discusses the very difficult question of exchanging terrorists for prisoners. Very, very important topic and we'll see as we get to that in a couple of days. But until then, 
please, please continue davening for our brave Chaylim in operation right now for Shalem Alam Yisrael and a safe return of our hostages. Let's hope by the time we finish this chapter, our hostages will be home. Please learn daven lately nishmas. Seren Daniel Shimon, Arik Daron Vashelli, Hashem Yikam Thanks for listening. Have a great day.